Welcome back to Create Craft Costume, and I am Ashley, the Geeky Apprentice, and this is Cheryl, the English trained tailor. Hello, I'm Cheryl. I had the opportunity while living abroad in England to be trained by a master tailor. Worked with him every day for three years, sat for the tailor's exam, learned everything there was about fabric and textiles and tailoring and sewing and pattern design and all of it. I also made a promise to him before I came back to what he called the States to share what I learned with anybody I could. So Ashley came into my life and here we are trying to share some of the old tried and true methods of professional tailoring and sewing. I hope you enjoy what I have to say. Today we are actually going to be working on a project that I have for my classroom and I'm tapping it behind me. I am a teacher and we're about to begin a Harry Potter unit. So. I purchased a really big, lovely Hogwarts backdrop that you will see. I wanted a way to hang it in any way that I wanted, whether it's on a bulletin board or on a photo backdrop or outside, I don't care. And the only way for me to be able to do that was to add uh, grommets to the top of that, which I have now figured out are actually not grommets. Grommets are really large. Uh, eyelets, which are what I used, are really tiny. So this was my first time applying eyelets so full disclosure the first one you see is a true learning experience and the reason that i'm doing it is because cheryl does not like them you know people say sleeves are right from the devil setting in they sleeves okay. no no i will set in sleeves all day long don't make me do grommets don't make me do eyelets don't make me do snaps, and if at all possible, don't make me use a rotary cutter. I'm a happy camper, but here's the deal. You have to use hammers and hitting, and there's lots of metal parts, and I just don't like them. And fortunately for me, I have a husband who is very doting on me, and he will say, I'll do that for you, sweetheart. And, and now I do. He does, so it's great. And now this is Ashley, and she does it for me. <laughs> They're not hard, they really are not. I just. I just, I guess I'm spoiled. If I don't have to do them and somebody will do them for me, great, that's fabulous for me. But they really are not hard to do. Don't be afraid, just don't ask me to do them. Hello, this is a backdrop that Ashley purchased for her kids at school. She's gonna take the pictures in front of that. I think it's just absolutely fabulous. But as you can see, it has creases in it where it was folded. That just will not do in this land. We have to get those creases out. So there's a couple of ways to do them. We are concerned about this fabric because it, you can hear it, it has a finish on it. But we have decided that is fabric because it frays right here you can see that it frays if it were plastic it wouldn't fray but that's the telltale sign it is definitely a woven fabric so that way we can iron it but we have to be very careful all right <laughs> what we're going to do we're going to come along these and we're going to tell you the difference in pressing cloth there's this kind of press cloth which you may or may not have seen it has the grid in it so it protects your clothing, but it can at times leave the grid imprint on your fabrics. If you have a fine fabric or even a, a linen and you iron it too much, it will show that grid. So we don't want to do that. Or a velvet, that, that's a thing. Yeah, so you don't want to do that. So we're using the other kind, a chiffon, but it's just a little piece of nylon or polyester silk, but we're gonna place that over this. And we're going to put a little water because steam, I'm nervous about the steam. And then I have my iron set on relatively low, I think I have on a low wool setting. Why are you nervous about the steam? Um, the steam is very, very hot and it may, if this has plastic in it, it may melt it. If it has polyester or rayon or some kind of silicone, it could melt it. I just don't know. I don't know what it's... I don't know. So steam, unless I'm really cons know for sure what I'm steaming, I have to be careful with steam because you never ever know. Okay. Now, as you can see, the wrinkles are gone. There are some creases there, 
but if you hold it up, the wrinkles are gone. The creases are gone. And that's our goal. Now, tip, if you're not comfortable with ironing, a lot of people are not, you can put it in the dryer, not on a hot dryer. Toss a little wet washcloth in with it, put it on your dryer for a minute, let the fabric warm up, the wrinkles should fall out. They may not be as flat as with an iron, but depending on how picky you are and what you're doing, oftentimes that will, that will take the wrinkles out of something. Just, But you gotta make sure you get it out before your dryer, it sits in your dryer or you will have new wrinkles. You can see the side that's ironed and the side that's not. Oh, such, such a better difference. Yeah. Yeah, such a better difference. We're gonna finish that up before putting the grommets on. We are. Or eyelets. Grommets. Grommets. Mm -hmm. So why is this? Grommets are bigger than eyelets. So why does it say eyelets on the packaging? What size did you get? That's why. If they're less than an inch, they're eyelets. If they're bigger than an inch, they're grommets. I had no <laughs> idea. New for me. Hey. Okay. Silly little rule, but unless things have changed, I think that's how the Notion companies do them. You saw the before. Here's the after. Look, you can actually tell what it is now. So, full disclosure, you can see where the, so this isn't a wrinkle, this is actually where the crease was in the packaging. So that's just a heads up, if you wanna purchase this as well, I'll leave a link down in the uh, description. But even with that, I mean, let's get real, no one's gonna be paying attention to that when there's kids in front of it. So I'm really, really excited about this. <laughs> okay, it is grommet time. You may be wondering why you are listening to me. Well, um, Cheryl hates anything to do with grommets, snaps, and as you learned in previous videos, rotary cutters. So, I have never, oh, and actually, sorry, from previous, it's not grommets, it's eyelets. Those are not the same thing. This is three-eighths of an inch because I just wanted to be able to hang it up on any board that I chose. And my, my current plan is I want to put one in each corner, one right in the middle, and then two on either side to stabilize it. If you have never done uh, snaps or, or eyelets or grommets or whatever one we're doing, it's not necessarily pre-laid out. So for example, I've never done eyelets, but if you just buy the eyelet package, this is what it says, which is less than helpful. So you need like it, I think they call it an anvil. It says eyelet tools, but I think they call it an anvil on the back. And this, is where you get all of the instructions. So the first one is you need to reinforce area where eyelets will be applied with interfacing. So Cheryl has been over here and she has been cutting the little squares of interfacing that these are going to sit in. And that's to help make sure that your fabric doesn't pull out. We had a discussion on what type of interfacing. You wanna make sure that the fabric that you're using can withstand the heat. It, this is a Taylor Pellon fabric, so it can be used on silks. So we think that this will be reinforcing enough, but can still be used on this type of fabric without possibly melting it. And the next part says, mark position of eyelet on fabric by tracing around inside opening of eyelet barrel. They don't tell you this, but I am pretty sure that this is the eyelet barrel because of this picture. That is actually why we turned this inside out. By that I meant upside down. We turned this over is what it is. And it's because it says um, cut out hole, insert eyelet barrel in hole from, from right to wrong side. So if you don't put this in like this, meaning once I cut out the hole, and you'll see that, it's going to come through like this. When you smash it, which is what we will be doing. When you smash it, the smashed part stays on the side that nobody sees. So that's why that's really important. So that's why I turned this over first. I will walk through each of these pieces or each of these instructions as we're going along, but just know that if it is not on the back of your eyelets, I mean, it tells you what they use it for, but you know, if you've never done it, that's not helpful. So if it's not on the back of there, 
make sure that you find the anvil or, you know, watch this YouTube channel. That'll help. So let's get started. First step, reinforce area where eyelets will be applied with interfacing. On to step two, mark position of eyelets on fabric by tracing around inside opening of eyelet barrel. Cut out hole. Okay, mark position of eyelets on fabric by tracing around the inside opening of the eyelet barrel and cut out hole. So I previously didn't mention this, but because I want them all hanging at the same spot, we marked a line where we're going to put the middle of these eyelets. So I am just putting this in here and trying to get it as centered on that line as possible. And obviously I'm just pushing this down really tightly so that I can see, is it on the center or not? And then I went too far. Okay, hold on. Or you could do a Cheryl's method, which wasn't filmed yet. <laughs> and instead of doing it this way, I can put it this way and, and center it all really nice and pretty. And then I'm just gonna draw a circle like this. Yes, my elementary education is serving me very well. And now we're gonna cut out this hole and I'm gonna put it through this way. That's step two. After cutting it that way, that works just fine. Cause I swear it says that right here by tracing around the inside opening of the eyelet barrel. Technically it doesn't say it to, to uh, put it under the fabric. So guess what? This is an example of me making things overly complicated and I don't care. Insert eyelet barrel in hole from right side to wrong side of fabric. Place an anvil on very hard surface like concrete and position eyelet on anvil A. This hole is now cut. This is what it means by placing the eyelet barrel through the hole. Okay, they don't tell you what part the anvil is, but I'm assuming it's this. Position eyelet on anvil. Thinking, thinking. It is. <laughs> Because it doesn't tell you to put the washer on first, so I'm like, why am I putting this on here if this isn't on yet? <laughs> okay. This is why if you ever see something and it comes with these, now you know why, okay? So. Blood pressure rising. Well, I'm pretty sure that it asks for, because then it says place washer dome, or place washer, and I know this is the washer, Dome side up. So this one you can see. I don't know if you can catch it on camera, but there is like, there's like a, a ring around here. So this is the dome side up. So I've got to put that on here. Dome side up over barrel of eyelet. Position stud end of setter into barrel eyelet and hammer forcefully. So what is this? Oh. Thank heavens for pictures, that goes on the bottom. Okay, so this goes here. This goes right here. And now I need a hammer. <laughs> and we are going to move to something harder than my cutting table and then we will be right back. Okay, second time. I figured out what I did wrong. They don't label their parts. This is not the anvil, this is the setter. This is the anvil. So when it says place the anvil under the loop, it means this. And for the record, that's why pictures are really important. I'm also not gonna make this the most complicated way possible. And so I'm gonna trace it this way. We have to trace this first. That's right in the middle. I don't like that. I'm gonna get it closer to the edge, which I can decide that. So I'm gonna get this closer to the edge over here. And I'm gonna cut out that circle instead. No one will see that but me. And now I'm going to cut out this hole. Okay, now this goes up in here. Yeah, it totally worked last time. All right, there we go. Just snug like that. The anvil, this is our anvil, goes under here. Our, what did they call this, the dome? 
no, this is the washer, but you place it dome side up, goes on top. And remember the dome side has to go up. And then you set the, the setter, this is what this, this was called, you put the setter right on top. And then you have to hammer it with one of these. But you can't do it on this because it's way too not, not hard enough. So we're going to move this over here and I will edit out the sound because no one wants to hear that. Make sure it's all lined up, which you can do by feeling. It's important to hit it evenly. I learned that on the first one. Should it be able to move? I have no idea. This one does, but it does work. You have it here. You have it here. It is not coming off. I don't know if I hit it more, if it would stop moving, but it is at least stable. I got to do that three more times. Five grommets and an ironing later, and this is what we got. You do want to make sure that you're paying attention to the color because when you come out, it definitely, I feel like this blends in really, really well. It might even look like a star. Uh, the other thing that I recognized is the reason that some of them move or almost look like they're going to come off is because the this, this uh, particular fabric panel is very, very thin if you can see that. These are built to accommodate much thicker fabric. So yes, that's actually why these are spinning. So it's not that they're gonna come off, it's just that they have room to wiggle as we would say. I'm gonna be taking pictures tomorrow and I'll share a shot of it on the wall and I'm very excited. This was totally worth it. I will make sure to leave a link for everything down in the description down below and we will see it in action tomorrow morning. Okay, I acted like we were done. We're not. Since we spent all this time ironing, and more than likely, you are not going to be taking this to a location where an iron is possible to freshen up. I'm also not taking it to a location where I could possibly put it in a dryer. So instead, we are gonna use a technique that is used on heirloom quilts. The reason that we have these these like color creases. Again, these are not wrinkles. These are actual creases from what was transferred in the packaging. So in order to help keep this as straight as possible and not lose any other color transfer, we are actually going to put a very, very thick piece of fabric in between it because the thicker the layers, and actually this is terry cloth, so this is definitely a, a thicker fabric. The thicker the layers, the less creasing you get. It's not as hard on the fabric, which is what they recommend for heirloom quilts. And that's why you'll see them sometimes they're like, they're not all flat, they're puffed up inside a display cabinet. And you're actually supposed to take those out and freshen them up every like two or three, maybe six months. This one is not going to be staying in there as long, but this is how I will also be storing it. So I will lay this thick piece of terry cloth on top which let me help on this end. Yes, I am one-handed, so I'm super helpful right now. And since she just had this terry cloth, we are cutting off the excess here to make sure that it can just fold with this big piece. And if you're super lucky, your uh, fabric that you choose is the exact same width. So we didn't have to adjust that at all. Now that the excess is cut off, we are going to be folding it in half, and I say we loosely, since obviously I'm filming. Alrighty, here we but, go. Well, okay, the first step is obviously making sure that you're not adding creases to it. So now we're gonna fold it in half. What is this, hamburger style? Mm-hmm. And we're gonna pull it down. Yeah, I can tell putting this away is gonna be super fun. <laughs> This one. I'm gonna go over this way. So we're kind of folding it in thirds. We pulled one end to the middle, the other side to the middle, and now we're going to roll it. And notice again, we have it as crease and wrinkle free as possible so that we're not adding to it 
when we are transporting or storing it. it's not going to crease it tight on any of those creases. So this is what I mean by when you have more fabric in between, it's not pressed right on top of each other. So you have a little bit more um, movement in between the creases. So it's not going to get as wrinkly. And it's much thicker than if you were just folding that itself. Yeah, I would say it has like quadrupled. Yeah, none, of none of those creases are hard. So none of those, none of these creases are hard. And it has like quadrupled in the size that it came in the package. So here it is hanging in all of its glory. Right now I just have it hanging off a bulletin board and it's just floating above the floor. However, I found that this worked really, really well. It is light enough that you can actually hang the hooks and the backdrop at the exact same time. So you don't necessarily have to have someone helping you. I had the students line up just like this and I will be turning those pictures into our very own chocolate frog cards in the next video. If you like what you see, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you would like more crafting related, book related and sewing related videos, please consider hitting that subscribe button and we will see you in our next video. Bye.